Hi guys, Hail Mary meets everybody. It's Michelle Marie Delaney. And today I'm going to do a B-cast because I want to talk about a couple things. And I want to make sure I get them right the first time. Because I could discuss these things in the live streams. But I think um, the live streams will only get really confusing. So I want to cover two things. The first one is the most bizarre. What is it? Well, it's this question. Why, when I get a whole ton of new subscribers, do they all of a sudden disappear? Now, at first, I thought it was just maybe a regular churn. And that does happen. But that's not the case. Because I'm not the only one who's been affected about this. Several other channels have had the member bases being unsubscribed without their consent. So, this is not just me. But it's kind of bizarre because it's like, why are they being unsubscribed? Who's doing the unsubscribing? If it's not the individuals that originally clicked to subscribe to your channel that's unsubscribing, why are they being unsubscribed? Well... Here's what I know. As I said, I'm not the only one who's been affected by this. It turns out that the other channels have kind of got together and said, we suspect, especially if you're a conservative channel, that YouTube is unsubscribing your people to frustrate you from being able to reach through to the 1,000 subscribers so you can get your YouTube partner program status back. Now, that's kind of very interesting because I don't think, honestly, my channel is that bad that somebody would subscribe after watching a couple live streams. And we were almost up to 350. If you add up the 12, the 14 that unsubscribe plus what I have now of 326, that would have been 340 people. So that's kind of weird. Originally, YouTube kicked 24 of them off. So now that's even more weird. So if you take those. 20, so to add to that 340, the 24 that magically disappeared, it came out to be 364 subscribers. Now, we keep thinking that maybe the people themselves are unsubscribing, but that doesn't make sense because even I don't disappear right after I subscribe to a video. I usually... If I unsubscribe to a channel, it's a couple of days later. So that's really weird. Um, I need your opinion on that because I want to see if this is affecting any of the other of the YouTube channels other than the few conservative channels I've talked to about this. Um, another thing I wanted to cover is, um, well, oh, houseflies, I guess. Um, let's talk about, um, something to do with what I do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Because some people don't really know what I do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. These are the two days of the week that I actually can focus on more of my type of personal time in addition to chores. Um, today I went through and I cleaned the pantry and I cleaned the cat boxes and I bought some... CVS brand air freshener to kind of begin the process of making this place smell nicer. Uh, and I mopped the floor in the pantry, which was atrocious. Um, I mean, really, it was atrocious. And so I got that clean. And 
I'm gonna need a lot of help getting into the bed, into the pa- into the bathroom because I can't bend into the tiny places where the people hair, the cat hair, the cat litter is kind of gathered, like underneath the clawfoot tub and and right around the toilet. It's really tight for me to get around. I can use some help. Really, I do need help there. Um, remember. I don't think that bathroom was designed for bigger people. And so because of that reason, it's really hard to get things done. So obviously I'm working on trying to clean up this place as best I can. And it's going to be an exercise of futility no matter what I do. Um, now, um, the other thing is that I want you to make sure, because this is important, I mentioned this on uh, on Monday, and I um as I mentioned also on Saturday, I'm gonna rehammer this. I'm gonna reiterate this. I want actually you mentioned it on you mentioned it on Saturday Saturday okay, but regardless, I'm gonna still push the same thing. I don't care what your political slant is. I want you to go out, and I want you on November sixth. To vote. I want you to vote your conscience. I want you to go to the polls and vote. If you're not a registered but you're eligible to vote, I want you to register and vote. It's essential you do that. Okay? Do not vote by fiat. What do I mean by that? Do not think it doesn't freaking matter and leave the possibility of a candidate up to chance. Please, please, please go out and vote. Okay? It's important. It's important because it's going to affect everything for the next four to eight years from... um, and, and that's important. you got to vote. Okay? You can bet that the Democrats are going to be asking or demanding that people vote often. Illegally. Stuffing the ballot boxes in states all over the United States. All over the cities. All over the towns. One person said, Vote by paper ballot. Do not trust voting machines with touch screens because they can be a program to cheat. Um, I agree with that. Connecticut, we use a paper ballot. Um, it is uses an optical scanning system, but it is a paper ballot. And so make sure in, yes, it is legal to do this in Connecticut. I want you to make sure to take a picture of your ballot ahead of time. If you want to share it on the internet, that's up to you. But the whole point is is so that you have a copy of it. So that way, if you ever wonder if somebody's been cooking their books, you'll have a copy of your ballot in your hand, on your phone, that you can go back and look at. Um... I know that sounds kind of conspiratorial, but I'm not trying to be conspiratorial. If you are voting on a machine at this touchscreen, and you vote for candidate A, and it constantly thinks you want candidate B, I want you to press the call for service button, and I want you to find out from the people that come to check their machine why your choice to A isn't registering and is going to candidate B. I want you to be diligent. I want you to make sure that your vote is recorded as you intended. Lastly, let's talk about something else at the same time regarding the voting. There is absolutely nothing wrong if you need to show proof of residency, such as a driver's license or utility bill when you go to vote. There is nothing wrong with that, okay? This is something that the Democrats, and that's when I say, let's talk about that term in a second. Oh, let's just finish what I'm saying. Have been pushing for years, saying 
we should not require identification to prove the vote. That is because they want to use that as a way to stuff the ballot box with dead people. <laughs> or multiple people voting in multiple communities. That's what they've been up to in 2016. And you can bet in 2018 they're going to do the same old game. What you, you need to do is you... If you are registered and or can be registered to vote in the United States, I want you to go vote. I want you to follow the rules. One vote per person, please. And I want you to vote your conscience. If you're a Democrat, vote Democrat. If you're Republican, vote Republican. If you're like me and you occasionally split your vote, that's fine too. Nothing wrong with that. It's your vote. Use it like you want it to be used. And that's, I don't, and it doesn't matter what party it is. I don't, I don't even really pick any party favorites here. Just saying this is, you need to vote, okay? Now, why do I call some of the Democrats Democrats? Well, first of all, let's look at what's going on. If the last few years, there's been a lot of very diabolically, the devilish actions done by several members of the Democratic Party. Um, these people are getting funds from outside sources, such as non-governmental organizations, being sponsored by people like George Soros. Um, these people are not necessarily concerned about your well-being. What they're concerned about is their well-being. That is their objectives of getting rich at your expense. So, if you vote for them, what you're really voting for is you're voting for something that may not really be at all what you believe in. Okay? Um, I can come up with a couple examples, but they would probably trigger off a whole shit storm. So, I'm not going to bother trying to give any examples, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's so many of them. But you need to vote for the candidate for you that you feel is going to be what you feel is the best solution. I'm a Republican, but I have swing voted many times. I am not a hardcore conservative. I am a moderate I look at things as best I can from both sides. I never had a problem being a person who can vote with a straight conscience, a Republican or a Democrat ticket. I haven't known to go all Democrat in some cases or go all Republican in other cases. But when I do, I look at the whole situation to determine which platform is the better one. So... Maybe you didn't know that. That's fine. A lot of people don't. What I am very happy with right now is I'm very happy with Donald Trump because he's doing a great thing. Um, however, I'm also very unhappy with what the liberals, and they're not all Democrats, by the way. There are some Republicans that are liberally minded. Okay? And so it really can transcend party lines. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be Republican versus Democrat, okay? It can actually, what we're talking about, more about is the right versus the left. The liberals versus the conservatives. The good versus the evils. As a moderate, I, I don't like when I see the people who are abusing the political system and are turning our constitution into toilet paper, and are trying to um, destroy the nomination process for Supreme Court justice. Or I see people that are, you know, just acting like children when they should be adults and they should be responsible. Okay, if that sounds like Natasha 78D, I'm sorry, but she's right here. Okay. Now, 
I myself realize that when I go into the polls and I vote, I'm taking a serious step in the right direction. And I gotta fill in this camera's not exactly center. Okay, well, it's just too late. <laughs> That's another story. Anyway, so the point here I'm trying to say is, is when I vote for a candidate, when I look at the people that are my choices, I try to find a fair balance for everybody. Okay. Um. November 6th this year is going to be a very, very important election. Just like 2016 was key to the beginning of restoring democracy to the United States. We need to continue to push for democracy and make sure that those in both the Republican and the Democrat Party that are dishonest, amoral, and improper get their walking papers and be voted out. This is essential. You need to do that. There are some good Democrats out there. There are some. There are some bad Republicans, too. So there's, it's really kind of a wash, which is really the better as far as I cannot say vote all party A because all party B is bad. That's not fair, and that's not true. Okay, that's not true. If candidate A and candidate B, regardless of party, if one is clearly doing everything he can or she can to destroy the American Constitution, that person is not going to be the one I'm voting for. Regardless if you're Republican, Democrat, non-affiliated, whatever. Okay? Very simple. Um, I love this country. I was born and raised in this country. And I understand that as Americans, when we go with the election Tuesday to the polls, that we are doing a very, very important thing that our founding fathers created in this Constitution for this reason. That they believe in the concept of governing of this republic that we've created. That we are the people, for the people, by the people. That's what it means. That's what it's for. And we should be proud of that. And we need to make sure to vote for the right people. Okay, now last thing. Um, let me reiterate for those of you who may have gotten confused about the sketch, this, what's going on with Google Hangouts. I actually found this out from Chris Perillo. Um, so if I, I don't know all the details, but here is what I do know. Google Plus was a social media outlet created by Google. And it was a good idea in a way it was supposed to compete against Facebook. Well, it never took off, okay? It never reached Facebook status, okay? It's a nice, quiet little social network. It's not like... Um, Facebook, there's no online games on it, there's not a million people posting on it, it's not as well known as Google, as Facebook is, or Twitter, or um, Instagram, or Snapchat, or whatever, it's just, it's just a small little, it's kind of cozy, actually, because I mean, I got a chance to meet some really fun people there, but... <sighs> Google said, you know what? It's a wash. It's not working. Let's kill it. Um, I think that's kind of sad. But hey, they pay the bills. I don't. So I can't, I can't stop them from doing that. Um, I just hope that all of us who have our content that we put into the website, such as our photos and videos, that we can still get our photos and videos back that we've uploaded 
to Google Plus uh, somehow. Okay. Maybe they could resend it back to our, our, our photos folder or whatever. You know, I don't have a lot up there, but I have some. Including a lot of pictures of my cats, which I got two here. One is laying over by the camera and famous. Come on up. Come on up. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Fame's here. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Please don't. Uh. Yeah, I know. You smell like you've been around the garbage can. Uh, yeah, you've been outside. Ugh, you're shitty. Ew. Okay. Um. Now. Um. The point here is, is that I have pictures on Google Plus that I want to get off. Okay. So I hope that Google is going to make it easy enough for me to reclaim what is my intellectual property. Um. Now. The other thing is that I don't know if you really think about what's been going on with social media in general, but have you ever seriously wondered if some of the social media things, like what Facebook has, is necessarily in your best interest? Let me explain. You have... For example, online games. Now, I'm not a games person, so I'll be honest when I say that. But here's the deal. All these games, all these, you know, things, all these sudden friend requests that you may not even know. I think the worst ones are the ones when Facebook says, All right, I got some friend recommendations for you. And then you go... Who are these people? And you're know, like looking at them. And they said, well, they're mutual friends with somebody else that you're mutual friends with. Okay. And then you start clicking accept, 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 whatever, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 times, right? All of a sudden, oh, I'm sorry, you took too many at one time. You're going to be on a timeout for a few weeks. What? You don't want to give me all these friend requests. Yeah, I, I don't, they don't even know me. And yet, you're telling me because you suggested these people that I should receive a timeout? Gee, that's really interesting, Facebook. And it's happened to me. Well, I'm like, why? I don't know. Just weird. Um, now, um, I haven't had that problem with several of the social media. Google Plus doesn't give a shit. I've actually added people to my Facebook that were recommendations. I mean, to my Google Plus. One after the other. Ding, 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 ding. And I never got warning. You have, you were selected too many people. Or they don't, they claim they don't know you. No. It's like, yeah, we know that. You're part of my acquaintances and friendship circle. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, swat, swat. <laughs> Face playing with me right now. Um, so, I mean, the whole point here is, I want you to know that I am very sad about the situation with Google+. Plus. Um, I don't know when it's going to go dark, but, um, I really wish that the people in power to be Google would change their mind, because I think it's a good network. I think it's being badly managed. I think that it could be better done. Uh, now, as far as what's going on with the YouTube side of things, um, if you have any clues, or if you've seen the same thing with your own user base, let me know. Because I, I've, as I said, I've talked to a few others that have said the same thing. So the question is, is... What should we do about What can we do about it? What can we do if our allegations are justified? How can we fight back against the system to make sure that 
we can get our subscribers that somebody at YouTube has erased on purpose. And I suspect that exactly is the case. I don't think it's just regular churn. Um, because it's too suspicious. It's way too suspicious. Okay? Um, so let me know. Lastly, I was just watching a video um, by Molly Burke. And she was saying is, one of the things I miss when I went blind. She had retinitis pigmentosa. I have a cataract in my right eye. I've been legally blind all my life. Okay. So here's what I want to ask. I'm going to ask the same question. She, she gave up. She gave up her point, which she thought was the biggest thing, which was not a single thing, but was a group of concepts as one thing. She mentioned, I miss freedom. Okay. Um, what she meant by that is when I had better sight of 2200 or 2400, I was able to, um, walk around in my downtown area and getting things done and go shopping and meeting people when I wanted to go places. In my case, um... I haven't lost all my sight yet. My right eye is a fucked up mess. My left eye is good. Um, it's not perfect, but it's it's good um, for where it's always been. It's still 2200 no matter what. Um, actually, it's a little bit better now than it used to be, but it's still 2200 um, My right eye is 2800 so... I mean, you can understand that when you when I'm looking at the world around me, I see the world from two different um, equivalents of two different focal points. If you want to call it, it seems like that. From because I this eye here is so cloudy that even with the cataract treatment, it does help a little bit, but it does not totally clear it up, and that's what makes it harder. Um, but hey, I try. That is probably the one thing I want to miss is that um, I miss when I could see better. Um, I do miss the ability to read the tiny, tiny print I used to read without a magnifier. Um, I miss, you know, um, some of the small things I used to do with small, tiny parts. Um, but hey, you know what? I know a lot of normal-sighted people in my age group that have the exact same problem, where they become far-sighted and they can't because of either arthritis in their hands or their failing nearsightedness. They can't, you know, do the fine things they used to do. So it's not just me. Um, but here's the thing that's amazing, and this is the thing that most people don't realize, is how much I still do every day. Um, it's amazing to realize that I do YouTube videos. Officially, I do a, a vlog seven, well, not seven days a week, but quite a few days a week. And then, of course, I do the B-Cast or the live streams um, Five times a week. And then I do sometimes a B-Cast like these every so often. And it's actually very exciting to see that I'm able to do any of this at all. Oh, missed. I, I gotta get one of those electrocuting racket thingies. Oh, for these house flies are everywhere. I open the door and of course they come flying in. And um, it's warm so they're active and they're buzzing around and they're driving me nuts. Um, really, they're just everywhere. Um, I would just like to say is that, you know, for people that are legally blind, here's the thing I want to get to, is that I think my channel in some ways has been an inspiration for a few of them because they actually realized that, okay, wait a minute, she's legally blind, She's got cataracts in her right eye. 
she puts together these videos and these becasts and she does all this work every day. That's amazing. But why is she stuck at only 326 subscribers? She could easily be in the thousands now. What has happened? Let me be honest when I say what has happened. Some of it is my own fault and not anyone else's. Let me explain. Um, to, it's, I do it still to some extent, but not as much. I, prior to 2015, had a channel that sounded like a spoiled brat. Kicking and screaming. And people didn't like that at all. They really didn't. And I don't blame them. And so I, me and Lomi talked about it, and we both agreed that we needed to change the format. We changed the format to focus on, you know, real-world topics and real-world concerns. And our subscribership began to improve. Thanks to the help of people like Cringe Report and our 11H30 and the, crin, um, and the Cringe Report channel and all this, we're starting to see some positive changes. And... I, a couple times I forgot to give him kudos, but yes, he is important. His name is Nick. And then, of course, Rich. And Dave is Critical Unity. He's a new one. And then we have Steve-O. And even Dory was important to the channel. I'm still hoping to get sit down to Dory and talk to her some more. Um, I didn't see her today. But I want to keep trying to talk to Dory and see if I can get her to come involved. Oh, um, yes, by the way, um, I want to talk one more thing, and I want to try to keep these things relatively organized. Let's talk about what I originally was, um, the asking for money. People actually said that was one of the things that turned them off in the past. Again, remember, as I said, and I start my channel, we started out, it sounded almost like a spilled brat, screaming and ranting and raving about the things that were wrong. And I'm sorry about that. Um, because, you know, I, I, I don't know, sometimes I can be just as bad as the millennials, I guess. It's not like it's only a millennial thing. The victim mentality, it's... It's, it's very easy that even the Generation Xers can feel the same way. Um, it's, it's sad to see it because, you know, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing, actually, um, to be honest with you. And that's one of the reasons I also said it's time to change this tack. Without the assistance of the, the YouTube Partner Program, I wouldn't get any coffee money until I can get this... Um, the thousand subscribers I need. I almost got the number of hours I need for the year. Almost got it. Um, but it's the subscriber hours. It's the subscriber numbers I need now. Um, so unfortunately, there's no appeal process to say to YouTube and say, well, first of all, as I said earlier, is I think that they're the ones who are taking away my subscribers. So... And they're also the judge, they're also the jury, and they're also the executioner. So basically, going to YouTube and saying politely and in an educated way is, hey, I think this is happening and this is why my subscriber base is so crappy. Uh, they're going to laugh at me because they got total control of the system. But anyway, um, so let me go back to the money thing. I did ask a lot for money, and I... Um, sometimes I really sounded like a screaming two-year-old, or maybe not two, well, maybe more like a seven-year-old. And I'm sorry about that, because, you know, I wasn't really trying to get really, really whiny. I just, uh, I don't know why I chose that format. It just wasn't right. And, of course, it didn't do anything to improve my channel status at all. So, I'm sorry about that, guys. I do could use help, yes, but, um... But just the way I, I approached it was just downright cockamamie stupid um, and not at all professional. One uh, of the things 
is, is I made some bad choices that I think were stupid. And I don't deny that. And that's the reason I'm saying this is that when I was asking for money back then, a lot of people kind of wondered if I was seriously sick in the head. <laughs> um, and I must tell you, I understand that 100%. Anyway, the point is, is that, um, you know, I just wanted to make sure we understood that I was truly sorry for those bad times ahead. Um, now... What about the renter's rebate that's coming up? I did want to cover that briefly um, and what I'm going to be doing. The renter's rebate is a program that's by the state of Connecticut for people who are elderly or disabled. That is basically gives a maximum up to about $700 um, per, for a single person. I think it's a little more for a married couple, but I'm not sure. Um, that is a refund for... Things like your rent um, and utility expenses. So you can get like $700 back from the state of Connecticut's controller's office. Arizona also has a program similar to this. Um, what's good about it is for people in fixed income is we use this money to do things like um, get... Christmas presents, or buy clothes, or things like that. In other words, we use it for good things. Um, and this year is certainly no exception, because this year we need to get that new Mac. Well, when I say new, I'm going to explain what I mean by new. I'm not talking about new, fresh off the assembly line. That is just not going to happen. Um, but what I mean new as an upgrade... Um, even though it's an old one, for my existing Intel iMac, which has basically fallen behind in keeping up with the live streams in a realistic manner. And um, and it, I've I looked into a couple of things in the past. I'm still looking into a couple. And at first, I was a little unsure about this, about the... Um, issue of the 2011 one because I see so many 2011s and here's what I found out number one it has one Thunderbolt port I thought it was just for the display it's not it's a Thunderbolt port and two it has a Firewire, Firewire 800 port which is totally awesome because that means that I can basically just drop it right in place of the existing Intel Core 2 Duo iMac and everything will plug in and it has a DVD burner on it and it has an SD card reader slot, which is cool because that means I can do some great stuff. And the SD card reader is conveniently on the side of the machine like the DVD ROM is so you can go ahead and load your material in. Now, as you know, the newer Macs, they took out the DVD reader um, writer because they thought that there was really obsolete technology. Well, no, not really. Um, it's really awesome to have the ability to make in um, DVDs, especially for backup purposes. Um, I was really, I'm really looking forward to possibly getting the 2011 because I did not realize that it did have uh, a good portion of the stuff that I was looking for. Another thing um, with it, of course, is secondhand, is you can get with them that are in fairly good shape. They're not the most expensive of the IMAX, they're not the most powerful of the IMAX, but um, they are certainly. Um, the most um, expandable of the IMAX. Um, and that's a, that's a big plus. So I'm going to look into getting the 2011 IMAX. Now I did look into getting a 2010 Mac Pro, which is certainly an awesome machine in its own right. Um, however, the problem with the Mac Pro is, is that it's going to need a monitor... Okay, and it does have a built-in speaker on the front of the machine and a headphone jack, like on the Power Mac G5. But um, 
I like the practice like I have my setup now with my current setup with the mixer and stuff. Except the only problem is, is where would you put this behemoth tower? Since the cords that plug in uh, to the um, stereo jacks on the back of the computer would be too short. You would have to buy extended length cords to be able to do anything with them. Um, so, you know, yeah, I might have an extra ability to swap some cords around, but um, here's the biggest killer. 1,200 watts power supply. Now, that's 1,200 watts if, if you have it loaded to the gills. Now, I don't, but um, given the way my electrics are in this, book, this apartment, that would be suicidal, okay? So, here's what I was thinking is, let's say I get the maximum of the $700. One of the things I want to do is this month, because care credit is paid off, I'm going to be sending, it's already scheduled on the budget, so I don't have to worry about it, $100 to Capital One. 100 instead of 50 Then, when the renter's rebate check comes in, is deposit and clears whatever it is. Let's say it's 700 because that's the maximum I could get. Let's say 700 I am then direct depositing from my checking account the $700 into my Capital One as well. So basically, I will have made a payment of $800 to Capital One. That has advantages because not only does it pay off the principal, it pays off the interest. Then, I can go ahead and buy an iMac. When I found it was like $340, and I think some of them have free shipping. So let's just say it came out to be about $370, just to keep the math easy, $400. That means I have another $400 that could be used for things like buying new clothes, um... Which I do want to get some more clothes. And um, maybe um, buying some other small odds and ends I need around here. Okay. So that's another project is what to do with the change. I don't know yet. Okay. I'll leave, I'll, I'm going to leave an open door on that. Because right now we don't know how much we're going to get rent this rebate. But we know we're going to get it near the beginning of November. That's all I know. Okay. Um, and lastly is, here's the deal with the schedule, just for those of you who do not know. It is at S Sundays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, okay? And Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays, it's at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. The reason we have it on earlier those three days is because we do have audiences, members in Europe. And for several of them, it has been too late to be up at midnight and later their time. So to reach out to more to my European, I mean European audience, I felt it would be better to have the show earlier in the day so that they can be part of the show. Okay? And uh, and don't forget the Cringe Report itself is on Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and uh, we will be on next week, of course, uh, next Saturday. Uh, Shoe Nice is going to be on next week at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday as well. So he's coming back for a return visit. And um, we got to have a coming up, coming Halloween special. And that's going to be fun to see how that's going to work. So, for now, I want you to... Keep in mind what I said about getting registered to vote if you're not. Because your vote is essential to protect this democracy. 
Alright guys, see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye everybody.